Hey everyone, welcome back. It's great to see all of you. Today we're going to be checking out a song for our future gigs. This one's going to be Hypersonic Missiles by Sam Fender. If you just want to play along to the backing track with me, then skip along to the end of the video. I'm going to be starting it midway through the first verse, so sorry about that one. Anyway, here's what we've got coming up. Alright then, Hypersonic Missiles, let's talk about the big issue of this one. The song is played in the C-sharp standard tuning. Now for us that means detuning the guitar a whole step and a half. I appreciate everyone's going to be coming to this lesson in E standard, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to teach the song and play it the right way, but in the wrong key. So I'm also going to be in E standard as well. It's going to sound a little bit strange when it comes to sort of practicing the song and then jumping to the examples and the backing track, but I promise you this is going to be the quickest way to get through this song. And with that in mind, let's go through the verse chords. They just sound like this. running the amp a little bit hotter than we're used to, we're going to be cranking up the reverb and also dialing in a little bit more treble than we'd usually do as well. And we're going to be starting with this G chord. This is a fairly neutral sounding G, there's no major third in it so you could call this G5. And that's the third fret of our E, missing out the A string, open D, open G and third fret of our B. The second chord we're going to play is going to be an A7 sus4. And that's open A string, second fret of our D, open G and third fret of our B. The third chord we're going to play is going to be a C sus2. And that's simply third fret of our A, missing out the D string, open G and again third fret of our B. Rhythmically, I'm sure you noticed I was doing some palm muting as well. I was also accenting some of the notes. In my head, I was often counting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And with the chords, that would just sound like this. Also notice that every now and then I'll do a little downstroke, upstroke and downstroke just to break up the rhythm a little bit as well. It also helps transition between the chords. Let's just review that. So we're going to play through that sequence twice and at the end of the second time we're then going to play this little riff on a G chord before going into the chorus. It just sounds like this. So 
So we were starting by moving our ring finger over from the third fret of the B to the third fret of the E now, leaving the B string open. We were then going to bring in our index finger to the second fret of our G. Then I was bringing in my pinky finger to the fourth fret of our G. It's a really tricky shape to get that one, so don't worry if you don't get it the first few times around. Anyway, after that, we're then going to move our ring finger over to the third fret of our B again. Again, don't worry about it if you don't get this part down the first few times around. I'm just going to play it through slowly a couple of times and then I'm going to show you the example again, but in C sharp. Check this out. So we're now going to have a look at the chords for the chorus and this is probably the most fun bit in this song to play. I'll just run you through the sequence, it just goes like this. So we're going to start with our C sus2 and then we're going to move that over to our A7 sus4 and after we do that we're then going to go straight back to our C sus2 but we're going to use the second fret of our A string as a little bridging note and it just sounds like this. From there we're going to go into a G5 and we're just going to hang on that chord for a minute. And at this point we're then just going to push the rhythm ever so slightly and bring in the second fret of our G into this chord as well. I'll do that again with the sequence. We're then going to go around the chords again, but this time we're going to start on our A7 sus4. We're then going to do the rest of the sequence the same. And then we're going to repeat that.
We're now just going to have a look at some lead guitar for the chorus. Now this isn't exactly note for note accurate but it's a nice little idea I made up if you've got the spare guitar handy. I'm also going to be using the chorus effect as well just to add a bit of colour into the song. Anyway the part just goes like this. <laughs> So the best way to teach this is to chop it into two parts and the first part sounds like this. So we're going to do the open G to start, then third fret of our E, then open G, open B, open G. The second part goes like this. And that's going to be third fret of our E, open B, open G, and we're going to do that twice. We're then just going to add an extra third fret of our E on the end. Putting parts one and two together sound like this. We're now going to talk about the lead guitar in the second verse and we're going to keep our chorus effect on for this. We're going to start by sliding from the ninth fret of our D down to the 7th and then the 5th and we're going to play that four times. <laughs> After that we're then going to switch up the riff, we're now going to play this. So we're going to be at the 7th fret of our A, going to the 9th fret of our D. We're going to be doing that twice and we're also going to be pushing the rhythm on that 9th fret of the D. Then we're going to take that down two frets, so 5th fret of our A and the 7th of our D. And then sliding down to the 5th fret of our D. Another standout feature of the second verse is going to be the drum stabs, which happen right before the second chorus. And we're going to play along with that, but with a G5 chord. And it just goes like this. And I'll do that one more time.
as we enter the second chorus, there's going to be this really cool riff which gets played. And it just starts at the seventh fret of our A, going to the fifth fret of our D, to the seventh, to the ninth, back to the seventh, then the fifth, and then over to the fifth fret of our A. It just sounds like this. I'll do that again. We're then going to pause for a while and let the chord sequence go round and then we're going to play the riff again but the second time we play it there's going to be a slight variation. Instead of going to the 5th fret of the A to finish, we're just going to stay on the 5th fret of the D. It just sounds like this. Together it sounds like this. We're now going to talk about the final double chorus and at the beginning of the second chorus we're going to have a bit of an outro, it's just going to go like this. So you could see there, I was just repeating that section over and over again, starting from the A7 sus4, going up to the C sus2, and then fitting in that G riff, just again and again up until the end of the song. We're now going to have a look at the final bit of lead guitar which happens in the double chorus at the beginning of the second chorus and it just goes like this. So we're going to be in familiar territory starting at the 7th fret of our A pushing the rhythm into the ninth fret of our D and we're going to do that twice. We're then going to go down two frets, fifth fret of the A, pushing into the seventh fret of the D, but then the second time we're going to go fifth fret of the A, pushing into the fifth fret of the D. We're 
We're then going to go around again and play a slightly different riff. And this is going to be the riff which repeats up until the end of the song along with the outro. It goes like this. <laughs> So we're going to start off our 7th fret of our A, pushing into the ninth of the D like usual. But then we're going to push the rhythm again going back into the 7th of the A, and that sounds like this. Then we're going to go to the ninth fret of the D again, to the 7th, to the 5th. And if we want to, we can then bring in the 5th fret of our A as well. And that will take us up to the end of the song.